when I'm in the car, the music when I play it in the car is really where I like it the most. Uh, it seems to travel well. But I see, like, you know, southern landscapes. I get more of a southern picture. Uh, it's not really a California kind of record. Like wildflowers say, I would get California. This is more of a uh, rural south, I think, which we know a lot about. You know, we, we came from there. He wouldn't sing that high. Yeah. yeah. I can't do it. But when he does the bridge, it's like when you walk, you walk with me. He sings higher than me. You talk. You talk with me. With this album, what I felt strongest about is I, I wanted to show, you know, other people what I hear with the band, you know, that this is really where the band kind of lives when it's playing for itself. We grew up in Florida, you know, we grew up a lot around a lot of blues and country music, like Muddy Waters, Jimmy Reed, Lightning Hopkins, Helen Wolf. That's some of our favorite music. When we sit around listening to music, that's what we listen to. But when we sit around, and we don't have anything to learn or rehearse, and we're just messing around. This is the kind of music we play. You wanna, you wanna end it? Mama lady living with nothing. Daddy had to work so hard. Well, this room has been, I think we've had it for eight or nine years. We call it the clubhouse. It was a growing process because it became more and more like, well, you know, we could put some drums over here, and if, if we had the drums up, we could jam a little bit. They set up the equipment in there for us to, to just to do, just to play. Because everything was here, we didn't have nobody to go and get anything. And then it got to be, well, I don't want to go to the studio, you know? Wouldn't it be great if we could just stay here and bring some mics in? And then slowly we'd thrown up a few mics and, you know, made one of the offices kind of soundproof. And it's just become a studio around us. We built a better control room, <laughs> you know, because before it was pretty funky. Really close, yeah. yeah. I think we can beat it. It seems, it seems to hold back. It's a lean back. back. It seems to lean forward. When in doubt. Yeah, exactly. Lean up. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going on 113. That's it's just, just, just a tempo it. lean. It's like right, instead, right, instead right. of back well, here, there's, there's all of us, you know? Answer, what just, you just, mean like that? What about here? That, <laughs> it's a forward lean. It's a forward it's lean. Kind of a, one of the, the Mud Crutch record, you know, really turned my head around. We, we cut it in here. Entirely live, that record is. There isn't a single dub. And then I thought, well, why would I ever do it any other way? And I can't wait to try this with the Heartbreakers. <laughs> We haven't done a live record, like a proper live record, where the whole band plays together at the same time, and uh, we really wanted to do that this time. I didn't want to be one of these things that you labor over every drum beat and auto tune this and that, you know. There's no overdub to speak of, so it's a very organic record. More like a Polaroid than a painting.
about the right length. Right? Yeah, yeah. So the vocal was good. Well, you guys are playing good. We know. <laughs> <laughs> No self-esteem problems in this band. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I intentionally didn't make demos, which I had been known to do in the past, is make really elaborate demos. And I felt that it was restricting them as players a little bit. They're all such, you know, really virtuoso players that I didn't really want to come in and tell them what to play. He would bring it in, and he would have a sketch of the lyric and some chords. And he would say, here's his song, and he'll start playing it, how he was sitting at home. And the whole band will listen, and as we become familiar with what he's doing, we might join in. And when everybody starts playing, it'll morph into something else. You might change the rhythm or the tempo or make it a waltz or whatever it takes to make some chemistry happen. You hear a drum pickup and you know, okay, chorus, or you know, you take your cues from the collective vibe that's going on. And then wham, wham, they're, they're playing this great track. So I'd have to, you know, run over in the corner and just focus and, and try to finish it. Just getting a good song though is it's pretty exciting because to me the song isn't verified until I get into the studio and play it with them and make a good record of it. Then it's verified to me, you know. But till then I'm not sure, you know. It might just be me that likes it. I should have come in with that verse before yeah. I did. It does that, you know, where you got to watch so cook thing, and then the solo comes after that, right? I really wanted to get Mike up to the front. He's such an incredible guitarist. He also plays with a lot of taste. He uh, edits himself back a lot of the time. And I tell him this time, you know, I really want you right up front. Let's look at this like it's a John Mayall record or a Jeff Beck record or or where the guitar is right up in the front. You're gonna be the other voice in the record. Well, I got a new guitar, so I'm selling my guitar, so let's, let's make a record around that guitar. It kinda of did. I got nothing else to do. We can do that. Ron, you gotta be somewhere? No, not no. till 10. <laughs> Ron's well, good till 10. Where you going? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Steve. One, two, one, two, three. Yeah, it's called Mojo. I think that's aptly titled. Well, Mojo is a power. You've got your mojo working. Things are happening for you. You've got to help me, babe. I can't do it all by myself. you got to help me, babe. I can't do it all by myself. You know, if you don't help me, darling, Find somebody else. Yeah, yeah, Mojo is your spark, isn't it? It's your creative spark to me. I mean, it kind of takes you back to a, a different time, a, a swampier time, you know, when things were a little more real. Mojo means the magic, the the thing that gets girls excited, you know, the thing that the thing that uh, ex you know. Translate, you know. There's all kind of mojo. I mean, there's a mojo hand. Mojo hand was actually a little monkey hand that they used to shrink down these little monkey hands. 
chance to uh, make sure your woman couldn't love anybody but you because you had this hand, you know. Probably can still get one in Louisiana. You know, I don't have a definition for it. I thought it was mofo. <laughs> and when I walk, you walk with me. And when I talk, you talk to me. Oh, baby. Can't do it all by myself. You know you don't help me, darling. I had to find somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, you got to help me, baby. I can't do it all by myself. You know, we've done a lot of records that people identify that and like. So you're trying to to match your best thing and one better if possible. You used to have a situation where you'd had a big hit and then you had to come with another one all the time. I don't feel that anymore. I just, you know, I feel more a pressure to have something that feels pure to me. We have the artistic freedom to, to do this, and so that's what we want to do. And that's what that's where we're having fun right now. I think it really sounds like us, and I love this band. So if it sounds like us, then I'm happy, really happy with it. I just try to make some good music that I like, and I always have gone on the principle that, well, you know, if I like it, maybe somebody else will. You know, that I feel like, well, you know, Ten years from now, I, I can play this and not grimace. And I know you know? <laughs> I look, it's on your face.